If we thought the 2021-22 season was unpredictable, this campaign is on course to be even more surprising. Not only is there the unprecedented challenge of a Winter World Cup to contend with, but multiple big sides are in crisis or transition, meaning that several of Europe's top divisions see shock leaders with a third of the season elapsed, including Arsenal in England, Napoli in Italy and the oddest of all, Union Berlin, who currently head up the Bundesliga. Based in the east of the German capital, Union have only been part of the established league structure since reunification in 1990 and reached the Bundesliga for the first time in 2019 under the stewardship of Urs Fischer. So how has an upstart club, not even historically among the two biggest in Berlin, managed not only to gain a foothold in the top tier but to force Bayern into second place at the time of writing? How can a team with a stadium smaller than 17 of the 24 clubs in the English Championship be outperforming a league we have routinely praised as perhaps the smartest and most forward-thinking in Europe? On today's EFD Explained, we're putting Union Berlin under the microscope. With managers fired and hired at record rates this season, 20 of the 98 clubs in Europe's top five leagues already having sacked a coach, it's surprising that Urs Fischer isn't currently getting more attention. The Swiss, who spent his whole playing and management career in his homeland before joining Union, arrived in Berlin in 2018, fresh from two domestic titles with Basel, and in his first campaign took the Iron Ones from 8th to 3rd in the second division and promotion via the playoff. If that had been the sum of his achievements, it would have been enough to write his name in Union folklore, but Fischer led the club to 7th in the top flight, then 5th in 21-22, marshalling a stellar rearguard which conceded the second least XG in Germany behind only Bayern Munich, whose starting centre-back partnership, Hernandez and Upamecano, cost more than transfer marks £104 million valuation of the entire Union squad. But once again, Fischer has shown that his team knows no limitations, as, after 11 games, they're a point clear of the Bavarians at the summit of the bully, with 19 scored and just 8 conceded at the time of writing. Across the continent's best leagues, only 5 teams can beat that defensive record, and just 8 have allowed less than their 9.9 xG against, placing them almost neck and neck with Real Madrid. So the defence is legitimately good, but the attack was expected to have a rough time in 22-23. After all, last year only two of their players got more than five league goals, midfielder Grisha Prömel and striker Taiwo Awani, who left for Nottingham Forest in the summer after bagging 15 in league play, contributing 32% of Union's total. But an insanely hot finishing run has actually seen the team's goal tally improve, currently netting 1.7 a game compared to 1.5 last year even though under the hood, it's clear that things have deteriorated offensively. Their 19 strikes come from 11 XG, a truly bananas overperformance, turning an XG tally which ranks 82nd of 98 teams in Europe's top five leagues into a better actual goal total than Manchester United or Chelsea. And the twin engines of this rocket ride to the stratosphere have been Surinamese forward Geraldo Becker and American attacker Jordan Pifok who have grabbed 9 and 7 goal involvements respectively from just 3.3 and 2.4 expected goals. Even if you believe they're great, and Becker's 2.6 shots and 2.3 key passes per 90 are definitely good enough to make him worth a watch, this is an unsustainable rate to turn chances into goals. Even Arling Haaland is only 60% above his XG, Becker is nearly 300% above his. But this isn't to say that Union are just getting lucky. The Berlin outfit's improved results each campaign have been the product of genuinely developing output. In 2021, they averaged 0.13 xG more than their opponents each match. That went to 0.26 last year, and while they're only at 0.09 this season, they have faced the fifth hardest schedule of all Bundesliga teams so far, already playing Leipzig, Dortmund, Bayern and Europa champs Frankfurt. So what do they do well? We're not trying to be rude, but it's not pressing. Both last season and this, they've ranked lowest in Germany for passes per defensive action, a measure of the intensity of the press. Instead, they defend deep, with 53% of their tackles coming in their own third, the highest proportion in the bully, with the result that over the last 12 months, only two teams forced opponents to take a larger percentage of shots from outside the box. You only have to look at these maps from the analyst showing team control to get a sense of their style. The blue zone is the area the team controls, the red the areas their opponents dominate and the grey too close to call. And as you can see, even a struggling Dortmund side is far more territorially dominant than Union, who are more than happy to let other sides do what they want right up until they enter the part of the pitch where they could actually 
actually do some damage, with only four teams allowing fewer entries into the 20-meter zone closest to goal in 21-22. This sort of defensive setup may have a bad reputation, but it isn't a problem. It's a tactic Jose Mourinho once perfected and used by Antonio Conte Spurs, as this fairly ugly chart makes clear. It might not be beautiful, but it can be effective if your defenders know their roles, and Union need them to, as they spend a lot of time without the ball, averaging 40% of possession this term, the lowest in the top tier. Unfortunately, there has been a drop-off from last year, when Union players succeeded in 44% of their challenges, fourth in the division, while this campaign they're at 38%, 18th of 18 sides. Keep that up and the shots, XG against and goals conceded will get worse. But it's possible that this statistical decline is down to those tough fixtures to start the campaign, while they're also bedding in new acquisition Diogo Leite, a 23-year-old CB who joined them from Porto in the summer. As he gets comfortable in the team, we'd expect the backline to rise up to their previous level. And if Becker and Pifok keep banging them in in the meanwhile, by the time their luck runs out, Union might just be playing better putting them in a strong position to earn their first Champions League spot, though they would still be sensible to add some attacking talent in January, with eight teams boasting superior XG difference per 90 than the Eisenen. But despite our warnings, Union have made themselves one of the feel-good stories of the season, a fan-run club defying the teams bolstered by mega-investment from billionaires and on track to make history for the second time in under half a decade. And if they can do the impossible and hold off the big boys for the remainder of the campaign, they could bring the national title to Berlin for the first time since 1931, putting one of Europe's great cities back on the football map in style. Here at EuroFootball Daily, we'll be rooting for them all the way. So that's our potted history of Union Berlin, but do you think they can do it? Can they hold off Bayern Munich for the rest of the season? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll never miss an upload. We'll see you next time.